All right, we are live. Welcome, guys, to the Michael Game Show. What is going on, everybody? This yeah. is what everyone's been waiting for. So of I've course, host night for PGT, and I got my co-host Ninety Second Mycology here, and we have our very first contestant, the rookie mycologist. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. So, um, this is our third show now with our first official contestant, and it's the rookie mycologist. And I know a lot of people are excited for this because we're still going along with. Um, you know the question and answer format of a typical just simple game show and we're gonna see if is rookie still a rookie or is he gonna become a golden mycologist definitely a rookie but i think it'll be fun so you know it's just still playful if, if you get one wrong we're not just gonna end it <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> get out of here yeah. We, we, we curated some uh, questions here to help you along with the uh, game show. Yeah, so of course, of course yeah. since it's still only the third show, if there's any audio problems or anything happens, you know, we'll, we get it sorted while we do a live. Yeah, It'll get better as we let go. Let us know if there's any audio issues here coming up. So I'm just taking a look at the chat. Shout out to everybody. Um, this is our this is the beginning of the game show we're just hanging out with all three of us here nothing too crazy um joker asked can contestants win anything that is something that is coming up in the future um oh we need to the discord the michael game show discord is in the video description right now join that discord so that you can be updated right away on everything that's going on before all the other platforms and rookies links are going to be in the description as well. Yay. Yeah, if anyone interested in becoming a contestant, uh, the Michael Game Show's Discord is where we will be uh, pooling for contestants in the future. So definitely join the Discord if you guys are interested in coming on to the game show. And we're still ironing out some kinks with the sponsorship uh, once we get that going. We'll definitely have a lot of great prizes for you guys. There's a, a big list of sponsors willing to sponsor the game show. So we're excited to share what they have to offer with the community. So definitely join the Discord to stay tuned for more info on how you can come on as a contestant. Yeah, I know the rookie mycologist, he's got a Discord as well. If you want to pimp it real quick, this is the time to do it. I don't know if you guys want to join my Discord. It's um, it's called Shrooms and Trees. Um, oh, PGT, they always mention you because you my Discord is a paid Discord, guys. And so people, not people, like four or five people said, mind your Discord like PGTs. PGTs is free. I said, man, he should start charging. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on. But no, uh, no, it's pretty cool. We got 50, it's only been up a month. We got 56 people. Do a lot of cool giveaways. Right now, we're doing a cash giveaway right now. We just did a, a cash giveaway. We're doing another one. I'm giving away six grow lights. I got a ton of sponsors, so I got plenty of sponsors that's uh, giving me grow lights and boomer bag kits and all type of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, so if you want to join, they'll put the information up. It's all good. Yeah, right the now, main, the only thing we have in the description is the link to... Yeah, we have the link to Rookie's YouTube in the, the description right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, after the lives, we get it all updated with everything we talk about because we do reference some articles in the game show and we put the article links later on in the description so everything will be there. Uh, my Patreon is very close to launching. You can join the waitlist at patreon.com slash 90secondmycology and you'll be notified right away once that goes live. A lot of people are excited for it. Um, I've already got a bunch of videos uploaded which were deleted from YouTube like early on that a lot of people probably have not seen so that could be exciting for some people as well as some exclusives that'll drop there first but other than that I think I think that covers everything PGT what about you anything you need to plug um well shop shop <laughs> is opening soon or no yeah shop will be open back up uh, next 
fun day here, uh, June 12th, when my shop opens up again. Here we go. So... Can I plug the Twitter, since I just got deleted on Instagram? Oh, yeah. And they yeah, just Ricky's did, on Twitter now. So, uh, two days ago, my I Am Bass Drop Keys Instagram, my main Instagram, they deleted that for the third time. And then today, this morning, they deleted the Rookie Mycologist Instagram for the first time. And so I, I'm tired of Instagram. They already deleted me like three times for the I Am Bass Drop Keys one. And then now I'm starting to do the same thing with the Mushroom one. But you know, as a 420 creator, you're just used to it. I've already had YouTube channels and Facebook pages, all kinds of stuff deleted. So you just get used to it. But I'm pretty much tired of it. So I'm, I started a Ricky Mycologist Twitter at Ricky Myco. And so, you know, on Twitter, they don't, they, they got all kinds of stuff on Twitter. They don't care about mushrooms and and cannabis. And so that's where I'm moving everything, not everything, but I'm just moving the Instagram stuff to Twitter. So find me on Twitter at the Ricky Myco. Appreciate you. Yeah, so that just reminded me, um, as you're shouting out the handles, Ace Alex just reminded us in the chat that none of these people have Telegram accounts. Don't fall for fake pages because PGT just had a message earlier about somebody wondering where their package is because they sent money on Cash App. We have to remind everybody now, every game show, none, none of us have fake accounts. Well, none of us have accounts where we're going to ask you for your Cash App. We're going to send you, yeah, we're not going to send you a pound of weed and mushrooms. Promise you. Yeah, somebody just said, yo, Keys, you got, you're on Telegram? I'm about to send the money. I said, no, don't send the money. I'm not on <laughs> Telegram. I'm not on WhatsApp. That, those are all scams, guys. Please don't do that. Yep. I yeah, so everybody needs... So anyone trying to yeah. point you to any Philly go and teacher Telegrams, be aware, those are scams. They're, 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 they just take your we money and disappear. Telegram. So, yeah, don't fall you for guys those, guys. WhatsApp? I'm sure we're going to see uh, Michael Game Show things pop up hey you want to be a contestant send me a thousand dollars on telegram so we have to start putting that out there now that we're never going to do that Please. <laughs> so yeah but i think i think now that covers it covers it all i think that's rest of the plugs anything else in the chat real quick before we jump into the game oh here we go born born sick glass said shrooms and trees is a great discord community with a lot of good information being new into mycology, everyone has been quick to help with any questions I had. So there yeah, we go. That. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Cool people, cool community, and we do a lot of giveaways, so that's pretty cool. And then Owen Sidwell said, so dope, y'all are doing this. Happy to be here from the start. That's pretty hey, cool. I know we've Mexico, had one. Much love, much love. Viva la Mexico. We got lots of first dayers, day ones here. And then we have Brendan White. PGT and 92nd have helped me grow four strains. Hell yeah, they helped me grow too. That's what's so crazy, guys. I was telling you this on the live stream. These guys watching these guys to learn how to do all this stuff. I'm still learning. And just because of the support on their channels blew up so fast. I get to do podcasts and stuff with them. It's so crazy for me. Yeah. And like we said, we encourage people to just uh, start your content. Did we lose Rookie there? Well, I don't know Sorry what happened for a, a second. Bit. I'm back. Bring it back on here. Here we go. Yeah, PGT. I got you back. Okay. I'm trying to sabotage me, PGT. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a lot of right. times when we bring on contestants, we always try to ask them, like, what exactly got you into mycology? What made you want to go down this route of, you know, cultivating mushrooms and doing mycology work what, what how did it start for you awesome so i if you guys didn't know i was in the army i did four years in the army whenever i was in the army that was my first time ever taking mushrooms did that like three times in the army and didn't do it in a bunch of years and so i was like i said i was thinking about maybe what what month was i started growing in october so probably maybe march april of last year started thinking about you know growing mushrooms so i just started watching videos reading stuff on google that's why I, that's when i first encountered you guys' channels and then what happened was you know i, I, I got to be honest with you i tell you the truth all the time what happened was a friend of mine he had these beautiful penis envy mushrooms all packaged up in yeah. everything 
and I posted that. You guys probably remember before my Instagram was deleted. That's one of the first pictures on there. I posted that. And man, all kind of people were just so excited about it. And this one girl that I always wanted to talk to, she reached out to me. She said, yo, what's up with those mushrooms? And I was like, oh man, shit, I'm about to grow mushrooms. So just like a lot of things in life, uh, this chick that I was, that I'm feeling like that. And I was like, you know oh, what? Here you we go. Mushrooms? Yeah. I'm gonna grow <laughs> mushrooms. A lot of, here we a go. Lot of things happen for, for people because of women. That's what it was. So I was already thinking about it, but then when she was like, hey, I'm interested in those mushrooms. What's up with those? I was like, oh, you like mushrooms? Oh, I'm about to, I started a YouTube channel, <laughs> Instagram, everything. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I'm about, to grow, I'm about to learn how to grow mushrooms. That's what it was, what it really was. I was thinking, thinking about it already. And then this cute chick um, was, was interested and I was like, yo, I'm about to grow mushrooms. So that's how that happened. David Morris, the second said, just the tip, lol. <laughs> just yeah, keeping I guess, it real. Yeah, I guess penis envy money. So I was already like interested, but then you know, you just need a little bit more motivation just to be like, you know what? I've already watched enough videos, already read enough articles. At some point, you got to just start. That's what we're telling you guys about. Start making your content. You do all the research and everything, but at some point, you just got to start doing it. You make your mistakes where you make your mistakes at, you learn from it, keep on going. That's really what it was. That's awesome. It's very wholesome. Did you end up surprising her with like a bouquet of mushrooms? No, but uh, we're still talking, so that's good. I know, she's a real professional, like, you know what I mean? She's like a master's degree and all this type of stuff, like career professional. And so, yeah. So everything's going great so far. We'll see. Awesome. Well, that's a pretty great, wholesome story. That's it. That's it. And fast forward eight months, bam. I'm with PGT in 90 seconds. And that's up. Not even a rookie. We're going to find out tonight if he's still a rookie or not. Oh, man. <laughs> I can guarantee you I am. That sounds great. Yeah. What do you think? Should we get into it? Let's do it. Yeah, Ricky, you ready? Ready to become the golden mycologist? Let's do Here we it. go. All right, we're here. This is the start of the third episode of the Michael Game Show. We got Ricky Mycologist on. Today we're going to test him and see how well and how versed in mycology is he throughout this time he might be graduating from his rookie status but tonight we're here just to enjoy our time together learn some stuff about mushrooms and have fun with it and also don't forget we have a little donation goal here in the bottom right hand corner since the channel is not fully monetized yet we are using the streamlabs tip link it's right the, the first link down in the description streamlabs.com slash michael game show slash tip if you go to that link and you'd like to donate to the show right here It'll pop up and it goes a long way to helping build the show further for sponsorships, prizes, and everything like that. Hell yeah. All right, we're gonna get started here. We'll start the game show. We have a quick disclaimer. Always, we always try to you know keep people aware that the Michael Game Show is for entertainment purposes only. All the questions and answers have been researched and reconfirmed by our production team before the show. Audiences shouldn't rely on the information presented in the show. Please use your own judgment and do your own research. The Michael Game Show is not responsible for your actions. Yeah, and remember that common sense will almost always prevail. If the stream features materials that are protected by the fair use guidelines, all rights are reserved to their copyright owners. We do credit anything that we do use towards the rightful owners. So, in retrospect, please don't sue me, bro. Don't sue me either. All right. So, typical with the game show, we start off with tier one, two, three, and four. The questions get progressively harder as we go up in tiers. And at the moment, we you have your options of picking uh, what you like in tier one. So, currently we don't have a list of, typically this would be a list of sponsored prizes, but we're still working on some sponsorships, getting things kinked out. Uh, so right now, we're just kind of keeping it old school, you know, school grades, so. Keeping it fun, keeping it fun and silly. 
That's how we do it. So yeah, we're you, you get to pick you, you where you want to hop around in grade one, two, or three. Oh, uh, two. We're gonna pick grade two. Here we go. Here we go. Question for you: What is America's favorite mushroom? Is it A. Lion's mane? B. Albino penis envy? C. White button mushroom? Or D. Anoki mushroom? Mm -hmm. America's favorite mushroom? Hmm. There's two Americas, you know. Um. Man, I'm torn in between two of them. I'm going to choose. C. White button mushroom. That's All right. Final answer. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. That is correct. It is a white button mushroom. We'll check out a fun fact about the mushroom here. Button mushroom is actually the same species as the cremini mushroom and the portobello mushroom. The difference lies in the maturity. Button mushrooms are the youngest, followed by cremini mushrooms, and then portobello mushrooms are their most mature form. But you didn't Isn't know that, that crazy? Did you? A portobello I'm, mushroom I'm is gonna, huge. I was gonna say something else, but I, I had to put on my when I said America, I was like, the people are probably just cooking and you know what I mean? You always see those mushrooms when people are cooking. <laughs> right, going to the grocery store, what did, what did they all have is the same same mushrooms. You would have said, I mean, I, apes, I was like, oh yeah, them apes. But uh, like I said, two Americas. Well, how are you feeling now? What, what, how are you feeling after the first question? I mean, uh, no problem on that one. All right. All right. I'm good right now, but I'm sure that's going to go down here in a minute. We're going to see. We're going to see. Yeah. Yeah, I always find it interesting that the white button mushrooms are basically like baby pins of the portobello mushroom. And then when they're capped Man, fully, wanna, expands, so many jokes in my head, then they I don't become portobello. Say so many jokes in my head. You said America's favorite mushroom, anything with white in it, that's usually America's favorite. But I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Two all Americas. All right. Uh, what do you want to pick next for your grade in question? We want, is it still tier one or tier two? We're going with tier one still. I mean, uh, let's get number, let's get the first one out of the way. All right, we'll do the first one here. Question, <laughs> what logo does this represent? A, for the Golden Teacher. Oh, man. B, Let me think about it. Philly Golden Teacher with three L's. Wow. C, Philly Golden Teacher with two Y's. Or D, e on Telegram. Fungus. Philly. Telegram and Cash App. Uh, can I phone a friend? <laughs> we're going to go with, uh, we're going to go with A. Hey, you're correct. Oh man. So there's I a fun fact silly. here. So fun fact, there's now a lot of scammers pretending to be popular YouTubers like me and working my colleges. Oh crazy. So be aware. There are scammers out there. If anyone's contacting you with my logo or rookie's logo or nineties logo trying to, you know, get money from you, yeah, that's a telltale sign that they're trying to scam. Scam. So none of us are on Telegram and WhatsApp. It's a scam. Yeah, just just let you guys be aware. I, there's so many people that, that are contacting me, asking me, "Hey, is this you? Is this you?" I have to tell them, "No, it's not. It's not me. It's 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 a fake account." And yeah, they're getting really more <laughs> rampant nowadays. Man, I was just about to send you seventy dollars. I'm like, yo, don't do that. But hey, man, buy a T-shirt on my website. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that oh, I have an offer, they would be through my website. I, I don't. I don't do anything through Cash App or Telegram or any of that stuff. So it's just it's just shady stuff. Invader Kush in the chat man. said, "If you see the Telegram link, just block. Just block yeah, right please. away." Please. Yeah. I'll send your money to the cameras. Michael Geeky said, "Good luck, rookie." Michael Geeky. Geeky in the house. Man. 
All right, we're down to grade three, question three for you. All right, 90, hey. take it off. All right, grade three. Where is the mushroom capital of the USA? Is it A, Portland, Oregon, B, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, C, Seattle, Washington, or D, Shroomsville, Partyland? Shroomsville, Partyland, wow, okay. Oh, that's where we're at right now. Okay. I'm trying to a one-way ticket. <laughs> um, man, this is... I want to... You know what you say? You, sometimes you just got to go with your first choice, and I'm going to go... Go with the gut. I'm going to go with A. A, Portland, Oregon. Final answer? Yes. Unfortunately... It's B, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Yes, so we have a fun fact. Kennett is the mushroom capital of the USA. There's the fun fact. I was looking at A or C. Kennett Square, lo located in Chester County, Pennsylvania, is known as the mushroom capital of the world. An annual festival called the Mushroom Festival, of all things, takes place every September in Kennett Square and is coming up very soon. One of the annual events is the National Fried Mushroom Eating Championship. Last year, the winner was Molly Schulier, who easily consumed 12 pounds of fried mushrooms in eight minutes. That sounds like me. Molly also has a YouTube channel with 268,000 subscribers showcasing her eating journey. And big shout out to her. And there she is right there you know on the right hand side. I'll tell you what this is. This is what is it known as the mushroom capital of the world. That's like whenever you're from a small town people are like yo you know we got the baddest motherfucker ever out of the street right here they ain't the mushroom cap but they just said that they put it on a bumper sticker and now now i just missed the question because they put it on a bumper sticker 15 years ago well i used to i used to be a produce receiver for a grocery company up in cleveland ohio and all of the mushrooms came in from farms from pennsylvania it's so weird really yeah yeah, apparently. There's a lot of mushroom farms in Pennsylvania. Kennett Square produces like at least like a third or two thirds of all the mushrooms in the, the United States. Apparently, that's why they're known as yeah. the You know what? I'm the best YouTuber in the world. Because <laughs> I said so. It's like one of those and things. Who's the best know? YouTuber in the world? Oh, uh, me! I just said it. It got to be true. Somebody put me on a game show as one of the questions. I just said it. There we go. Maybe episode four. Rookie yeah. Pump. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. Well, look at this. Donna said, now Rookie just butt hurt as usual. I'm sorry you can't take a joke there. Get Dr. The 420. <laughs> All right, so tier one is finished, and we're on a tier two now. Yeah. So how are you feeling uh, about tier two? two? Let's, let's, let's stick with the same strategy. Let's go number five. All right. All right, I agree. All right, now I need a ticket from here. All right, so which image shows the clamp connection, a term used in mycology? Is it A, B, C, or D? And keep in mind that all pictures are credited to mushroomexpert.com. So we're looking for a clamp connection here, a That's term a... used in mycology. What's your answer? C. C. C, final answer? Yes. All C right. C is correct. Now, extra question on top of that. Do you know what a clamp connection is, Rookie? You know what's so crazy? I saw, like, this had to be maybe five or six months ago. I was actually, I read an article on the clamp connection on, I don't know what, what it was, but it was on some website. I knew like context clues. So I, I wasn't like, but I, I hadn't thought about it in so long, but when you said clamp connection, I was like, man, I heard that before. I'm not exactly sure exactly what it is, but I have read that before, like months ago. 90, do you know what the clamp connection is? A clamp connection is what's going to clamp and connect your, your strands of hyphae mycelium. So if you're trying to breed and you've got 
one monokaryotic spore and another monokaryotic spore that's one spore and another spore if you germinate those two spores separately and you're able to witness this clamp connection under the microscope boom now you've got a dikaryotic mycelium and that should hopefully be able to make it all the way to fruiting once it grows out so this this clamp connection is going to form the system almost like the veins of the mushroom and start start the whole life cycle so you always want to look for clamp connections yeah you see what i'm saying i believe that's just, just the same whenever i read it i believe i had the same reaction like i don't know what's going on yep clamp connection is just basically them doing the, the the making the babies process so that, that that's what we're looking at here <laughs> making babies yep. Making... The clamp is connected. Yep, the clamp <laughs> is connected. <laughs> All right, so what are, you, what are we looking at? What are we looking at here? Tier two again. Let's try. Uh, let's go to six this time. Six. All right, we're going to grade six here. Yeah. Question. All right. What is the most poisonous mushroom? Is it Ooh, A. Wait. Angel's wing. B. <laughs> dead man's <laughs> finger. C, Death Cat Mushroom, or D, Philly Golden Tea Chair. Just very oh, deadly. God. <laughs> no, so, well, <laughs> you know, I just posted a dead man's finger. That man reading about that was so crazy. Those are cool, the corpse fungus. Yeah, that was, that was so crazy. Coming from the wood and everything. Um. Don't Kill Carrot says, I change it to D. He thinks it's D. Philly Golden Teacher. I'm gonna uh <laughs> see, I just I don't I've never heard of Angel's Wings. I don't know what that one is. I'm gonna go um Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go to go with C. Alright, C. Let's see. That's correct. Quick fun fact. The death cat Fantastic. mushroom belongs to the genus of Amanita. It also contains amatoxins, which we discussed in the episode two of the Michael Game Show. Is Angel's wings a real mushroom? Uh, I think I don't people think so. give similar names to, like, there's, isn't there a deaf angel too, or angel of death, or something like that? So one of the nicknames for the oh, death cat mushroom angels. is called destroying angels. Yeah. Destroying angels. I'm gonna have to look it up. There we go. Somebody okay, say destroying just... angel in the in the comments section. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Mr. E said the kind of shroom you only get to find out the taste once. Say it, somebody say it. Are those edible? Are those mushrooms edible? Well, everything is at least one time. That's right. Yep. And if you didn't know about the amatoxins, it doesn't affect you right away. So if you end up eating the death cat mushroom. You don't know that you're poisoned until about 24 hours later when the toxins start to kick in. And then after that, that you're going to spend like a whole week just dying slowly from it. It's terrible. So don't ever eat these. Somebody was at, yo, Keys, you, would you go foraging? I'm like, man, I don't have enough information to feel like I could go foraging. Yeah, it does. You know, you want to make sure you're, you do a lot of research before you go eating mushrooms out there definitely don't eat the plate for sure all right we've got so we have one more yep one more, yeah, one more tier, two. There, tier two all right now you take this one all right here we go so what mushroom is often referred to as the mushroom of immortality is it a the woodier mushroom b turkey tail c lion's mane or d rishi I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Rishi. D Rishi, that is correct. Also, I never heard of wood ear mushroom before. Look them up; they're pretty cool. They look like an ear. Oh, those are the ones that look like an ear. I yeah, I've seen them before. A lion's mane so, and turkey tail. Ganoderma mushrooms are known as mushroom of immortality in English. Rishi in Japanese. Studies have found promising immune boosting effects of Rishi, particularly for those who are ill and less so for those that are healthy. However, the scientists discovered that none of the manufactured Rishi products were pure. 
only contain G. lucidum <laughs> and no other fungal species. Only one grow your own kit actually contain purely G. lucidum. And this is from the article, What is the Mushroom of Immortality by Lynn Ann Cat from Forbes.com. And we have a nice little picture there of some reishi on a tree provided by Mid Journey AI. Do you guys see that hand stroking that mushroom? Or was it just me? That was a subscriber. Yeah, hey. you saw it though, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's a little fun thing we put into the show. Anytime someone subscribes to the, it was, the it was YouTube fun. channel, it was uh, you know, a little fun thing pops up on the screen. <laughs> well, yeah, this is one of the, the great medicinal mushrooms that are out there, and why people like reishi so much. It's kind of hard. Like you can't just eat it and chomp on it. So it's usually put, you know, made into a tea or capsulated. Hey, put in your ramen noodles. Yeah, there we go. That'll be some crunchy ramen noodles if you do that. A little texture. So I, I actually right, tried to up. eat one of them. Um, turkey tail kind of falls under their similar medicinal properties, but they're they're very tough, and it's like eating wood bark if you try to eat it. Yeah, they can't it really eat. Open it up. Uh, it's not really appetizing, so the best way is to make a tea out of them in order to extract the goods out of it. You can drink the tea. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, going on to tier three. Which, which question would you like? Uh, I'm going to go with seven. <laughs> Great seven. All right. What is the term for the symbiotic relationship between fungus and the roots of a plant? the fungus helps the plant absorb nutrients is it a mycorrhiza b lichen d endophyte or d parasitism he should know this one he's in the 420 community oh, um mycorrhiza 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 that there is we correct go. <laughs> so many people say it differently like in it's like is it mycorrhizae, mycorrhiza, mycorrhizal? I've heard it so many different ways. We definitely, I definitely use it all the time whenever I'm transplanting my cannabis plants. Roots love it. So fun fact from the article, benefits of mycorrhizae by landscape water conservation. Uh, while plants support the fungus by providing carbohydrates needed for fungal growth, fungus helps the plant by increasing the fruit surface area. Potential benefits to mycorrhiza to plants, they enhance water and nutrient uptake, reduction in need of fertilizer, increased plant health and stress tolerance, and higher transplanting success. Definitely, 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 definitely works. I also put it, I'll put it in my grow medium as well. It is really effective for anybody in the cannabis niche. Really effective whenever it has direct contact roots with the mycorrhiza, but if you put it in the medium as it grows it'll find it it does help with the intake of the water sure that's also why we say to when you're buying your cocoa coir for mushrooms try to stick with the reptile coir because they do sell coir for gardening that has you know usually trichoderma or some other mycorrhizae right. in it to help the plants the roots monster connell just donated ten dollars towards the goal of the game show tonight shout out to hey. monster connell Hey! Thank you so much for your donation. This will go a long way towards favorite. helping, you know, us get the show going some more. Thanks for showing some love. Another thing with the mycorrhizae, they're, uh, they're also extremely beneficial for tomato plants. Tomatoes. Yeah, are... I grow I grow tomatoes, but you smoke them after you're done. Mm, maters. Oh, there you go. Smoking maters. Tobacco. <laughs> Smoking maters. Smoker Raiders. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go number eight, huh? All right. All right, 90 ticket. Here we go. What is the mycology term describing the fruiting body of a fungus becoming liquid as a phase of its life cycle? Is it A, autolysis? B, fungal gooification, right? Very scientific. C, liquefungation? <laughs> or D, eloquistelic? 
Deliquescence. Delic Deliquences. Deliquency. <laughs> Deliquence. 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 Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. This one's interesting. It is interesting. I like You know it. what? I'm going to go with... Uh... I'm going to go with uh... A. A. Autolysis? Autolysis? Yes. That is incorrect. The correct answer is... Delicacies. Never heard of it. Yeah, me either. But this is from the article Coprinus Comatis. What is going on with that inky cap? By Cass Fuentes from Fungus Federation of Santa Cruz. Deliquences happens when animal or vegetable tissue liquefies itself through the release of hydro hydrolytic hydrolytic enzymes that interact with the moisture in the air. This is one of the most known characteristics of inky cap mushrooms. Why does inky cap liquefy itself? It could be for propagating its spores. Now, wow. isn't this, this is also known as shaggy mane, right? I know shaggy manes are, are edible. I don't know if they liquefy themselves, but inky Yeah, these, these are shaggy manes. And you're not supposed to drink alcohol after you eat them because it'll do something in your body. I did not know that. Yeah, There's someone in the chat, let me see. I'm gonna look this up. I'm pretty sure once, yeah, shaggy mane. Once it grows up, it turns into the liquid. Ah. It's edible when it's young, but yeah, not when it liquefies. And don't drink alcohol with it for days after. I don't know if I want to eat something that liquefies itself. It sounds, sounds sounds kind of funky. Pass. I'll pass. So yeah. But, very interesting. It'd be cool to propagate ink caps just to watch them melt. Alright, we're going on to the ninth question here. Yeah. Which is a following is not a fungi genera that contains psilocybin. Is it A. Marcella B. Geronima C. Agrocybe or D. Pluteus it which is not a fun that it contains psilocybin um this is like a straight guess right here <laughs> you can do a 50 50 like straight up uh no the first thing i thought of i'm just gonna go with you know what go by your gut you know what i mean like the sats baby here, I'll, I'll give you a, a pass here with a 50 50. We'll drop, we'll drop two of the wrong answers here. Oh man, you just saved me because I was about to say that. Oh, you just saved me, boy. Oh, I was about to say D right there, boy. Um, I don't know either one of those, but the, the one on the left hand side where it makes me think of those mushrooms that I posted, and they, they definitely wasn't psilocybin. So I'm going to go with uh, A because well, I forget the name of those mushrooms that I posted, but they wasn't psilocybin and it was like uh, more, was it more chili or some shit like that? I forgot the name of them. Morels. David Morris. Yeah, I posted those morel mushrooms and I'm like, yo, that's the only thing I can think that's close to that. So I'm gonna go with A. All right, we're gonna pick A here. That is correct. Oh, and shout out to Mr. Duma here for a $10 donation. I was definitely going to guess D right there before you did that. I just realized we don't have this the cloud bot running in the chat right now either. So that's something else we got to work on. Ah. Everybody that follows me, you know I did that uh that multiple choice with the morels in there. Morels was, number, was, was the D, was the last uh, option. And I was like, yo, maybe that got something to do with it. I'm trying to use context clues. That's the way to do it. Shout out to hey, Lauren Sick Glass for their $10 Lauren donation. Sick Glass, shout out to you. Thanks for the support. <laughs> Slink and said, I'll be your bot for hire. Bleep, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to tier four, final tier. Damn, I'm doing, I'm doing okay where I missed two so far, right? 
I believe it, yeah. I think it was just two. Yep. Let's go, great ten. Let's go, let's go. All right. Uh, milk and sugar just donated three dollars. Thank you. Shout out. Milk and sugar. Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty delicious. That's what I used to drink as a kid. I would take milk and I would just add some regular old sugar to it, mix it up, and mm, that's delicious as a kid. That's like the leftover milk in the cereal. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's pretty much like cereal milk. Pretty much, yeah. Hey, I just, hey, I just, I just paid two fifty for a pack of cereal milk seeds. There okay, we go. All right, ninety ticket. All right, so, which of the following is the mushroom species that can break down and consume certain types of plastics? Is it A. Pleurotus ostratus, B. Pestilatiopsis microspora, C. Agaricus bisporus, or D. Hilarious plastivorous. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get rid of D. But I just watched a YouTube video on that. Was it CNBC or Insider or what are those? I just watched the video. Man, I'm gonna go with um. It's not D. The hilarious you yeah you very very funny with that one <laughs> you sure you <laughs> sure are you sure <laughs> uh matthew t pinkham thanks for the there three dollars and giving me some more time to fight. three dollars you know, go listen i'm thinking it's man i don't know i'm guessing i'm gonna say uh Corn. I want to pick A. A? Yes. Pleurotus ostratus? Yes. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. It was B. Pestilatiopsis microspora. Microspora, I thought I was made up. <laughs> I was like, so here's a really fun micro- fact from the article Plastic Eating Mushroom Species Benefits and Impact by Katherine Gallagher from Treehugger. Pestilatiopsis microspore can live on polyurethane, a common polymer in plastic products, and also in dark environments without oxygen. It can even survive at the bottom of landfills, which is crazy. It takes a mu- it's, it takes around two weeks to several months to break down and consume plastic, but it does do it. I watched a YouTube video on that. It's so crazy. So there we go. Now we know about plastic eating fungi. Which I believe um, PegasusBags.com, Garrett from Unicorn Bags. I don't know if he still has culture available of that plastic eating fungi, but he now goes by plastic eating fungi on Instagram because he's no longer with Unicorn Bags. So check it out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. One of those crazy things that mushrooms can do that you never know. But now you know. Yep. Learn something new. We got microplastics everywhere, so yeah, we got to figure something out. All right, two questions Keep left. Going. Number eleven. Grade eleven. Here we go. All right. How many species of mushrooms have been identified to be edible? Is it A, one thousand fifty-eight, B, two thousand one hundred eighty-nine? C, 5,163, or D, 12,859. I mean, they're all edible once, right? We just, you know what I mean? I'm just going to take the biggest number and just go D. 12,859. That's incorrect. It's actually 2,189. Who's counting, bro, right? There's probably more that probably be popping up, too, so... Can't really take that yeah, I mean, think about it. You have to eat it and then die or actually live to figure out if it's edible. <laughs> it says edible once. That's what, that's definitely edible one time for somebody. I think that there's over 2,000 different mushrooms that you can eat. Oh, we're down to... We're going to bring it up the rear now. What is that? Four? I missed four now. 
Which I'm a rookie. It's all good. It's all good and fun. Ninety, take it away with this one. All right, here we go. So the last question: Which Roman emperor was poisoned by mushrooms? Was it A. Claudius, B. Augustus, C. Nero, or D. Julius Caesar? He's dead. Uh. Poisoned by mushrooms. Uh, Slow Mac, ten dollars. Shout out. Thank you, Slow Mac, for the donation. Slow Mac. Slow Mac, giving some love. What do you know about it? Who about it? Damn. This I don't know. This, this last one. Right? Hey, chat. Help me out. Somebody. Here we go. Pointing a friend. I got like 95 friends right now watching. Try to help me out. Where should I go? Oh, she said, A, Claudius. I see a lot of A. I see B. I, I see C. I see A, B, yeah, C, I D. Uh. You know what? I'm gonna go with A just because Alex said so. If Ace hey, is wrong, Claudius. I'm gonna blame A. I'm gonna blame Ace if it's wrong. And he is actually correct. Hey, hey, hey! So, from the article Murder by Mushroom, homicide is confirmed in the death of the Roman Emperor Claudius by University of Maryland Medical Center. Claudius was a bright and capable administrator. He also genuinely cared for the welfare of his people. On October 13th, AD 54, Claudius became gravely ill after devouring a heaping helping of mushrooms served up by his fourth wife, Agrippina, mugshot on the right. That's her little bust right there. Claudius was dead within 12 hours. What was the motive? To have her own son, Nero, inherit the uh, throne. Ah. Uh. Isn't that crazy? Man, that, that is crazy. It's like a little, little uh, opera. It's, it's crazy. Like People opera. be doing that back in the days. Trying to they knew that the mushroom. mushroom. Like, how did they know that was a poisonous mushroom? Someone must have died from before. Hey, shout out to Ace. Appreciate that, man. Came through. That's right. So, was that four out of. I got four wrong out of 12, so that means I'm only in, what, junior high? Told you. Still a rookie. That's okay, rookie. I still... It was, it was still pretty good, because there's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, you don't always think about when you're growing mushrooms all the time. That's for sure. You know, I'm not thinking about Claudius. Yeah. I'm inoculating I, 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 I won't forget this, though. I promise you. You ask me that again <laughs> in five years, I'll definitely know it for sure. I'd be like, damn, yeah, I remember Claudius was poisoned by his fourth wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely. All right. That was pretty fun, though. So, um. Learn some new things for sure. Yeah, I know people love the information. Yeah, well, how, how do you yeah, feel? Kind of, I, feel I mean, I feel great. I feel great. You know what I mean? I, I stamp my reputation is really because people are accusing me of you haven't been growing mushroom eight months and i'm like no i really have eight months <laughs> right yeah <laughs> like, like i've never grown before before you seen this channel i never grew a mushroom a day of my life i think people are just uh because i'm not new to youtube they think oh because i know how to put together a video that i know what i'm doing and right no matter how much i tell them hey i don't know what i'm doing they, people ask me questions i'm like i don't know I'm a rookie, and people think I'm like being, I don't know, some kind of way or whatever, but I'm just telling the truth. I don't know a lot of this stuff. I'm still learning every day. Yeah, we're all learning. That's part of it. Yeah. It's in the name, the Rookie Mycologist. That's it. That's it. And people be asking me these advanced questions. I'm like, yo, bro, I would tell you if I knew, but I really don't know. Will I change the channel name one day? No, no, not ever. 
No, you know, can't do I that. feel like in 10 years, 15 years, I feel like I'm an expert or something. It'll still be a rookie mycologist. I mean, the name now people are doing their their own version of the name. You know what I mean? You know how it is whenever anything's popular. That's why you see people pretending to be us and, you know, 90 second mycology. I seen a, a Instagram account. Uh, 120 mycology. I'm like, same thing. The Ricky mycologist is like the new mycologist, the broke mycologist, the whatever mycologist. It's the same kind of deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's so many people that don't, you know, they don't know anything about mushrooms and they get recommended my main syringe video. And they go, damn, I thought this video was going to be 90 seconds. They don't realize it's <laughs> yeah. not the 90 second <laughs> right. So right. that still happens. It's funny. And then there's always the question do we have to cook the rice when it says ready rice right on it? Right, right, right. I get that question on the, on, you know, my videos. You got to cut this before we got to microwave it first. I'm like, no, just follow what I did in the video. Man. It's already, it's you could eat it cold if you wanted to. It's already ready to eat off the shelf. I showed them on the, the last 90 second video that I did that, uh, you know, because people were worrying about, you know, you got to break it up first and all that stuff. They see me inoculate the bag without breaking it up. Didn't do the break and shake at all. And bam, it's fully colonized. Yep. You got All I do I'm in favor of the the set it and forget it way of growing mushrooms. I don't do the fanning. I don't do the misting. Even though I see a lot of people doing that stuff, I don't do any of that stuff. I do the set it and forget it. And it's been working. You know what I mean? Maybe if I did the fanning and misting, maybe I'll get better results. But I try to do it the most efficient. Leaf. Like yeah, there's a lot of people things. that. They argue that back and forth. Well, do I have to break the rice and get it down into a cake in the bottom? No. What I do is just get it right below the Ready Rice logo, just enough to add gas exchange. And I've been a fan of just two hole punches. So you don't need to go. You don't need to go breaking your hands trying to break up that vacuum sealed rice. Yeah, as long as you can make gas exchange and as long as you can inoculate it, it's good to go. I did the break and shake on those bags. You throwing your thumb getting the workout, man. Goddamn. Yeah, your hand will start cramping. What are we doing? Yeah. Alright, All right, so should we hit an intermission and then we can come back and do a little Q&A with the chat? Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Alright, we're going to take All a right. quick intermission break here. We'll be back in a couple minutes and uh, you can get to hang out here, chat with us, and we'll answer some questions for you guys. So we'll see you in a little bit here. Yeah.
All right, we are back from intermission. We're back. Ninety, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, Drew from Inoculate the World would love to come on and be a contestant. So that could be hey, the work. Hey, Drew, what's up, man? Can't wait for you guys to hear the rookie mycologist X tape that's coming. I'm working on right now. Hopefully, you guys. Uh, Thanks everybody that's been listening to my music. I really appreciate it. Before I started putting my own music in the videos, I had like 600 monthly listeners on Spotify. Now, depending on you know where in the month it is, it's in between 10,000 and 18,000. So thanks, I appreciate it. New music coming soon. That's awesome, man. You you like doing it all, man. You like juggling, making videos, making music, producing music, cultivation. Whatever I gotta do. Whatever I gotta do to keep living this middle class life, I'm like, no, I didn't grow up with you know much, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, this is how people been living, all comfortable and stuff. Like if I gotta do fifteen thousand things, I don't care. I love this, so I'm happy to do it. I love music. I love making the videos. So I just like being useful, feeling like I'm doing something positive, basically. Oh, that's awesome. Keep it up, man. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it. Hey, that's a good ass idea there, Ace. He said we need a mycology game developer. Oh man, that'll be cool. Mike O'Shea game. Something I've like always wanted to learn is to get into coding with Unity, because Unity is such a simple game uh, engine. There's so many mobile games that's made with Unity cool. that are that are pretty good. Yeah, I don't have any kind of skills like that. Yeah, I wish there, there were, I had some skills to do there. That would be nice to have a, a cool mushroom game. I feel like they're, they're not as popular. Do, uh, David Morris said, wait, I'm not game? finished rolling yet. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys I'm going to be doing uh, trying BRF, BRF Tech and PF Tech. I'm going to be doing all those on my channel at some point for sure. Oh, yeah, we'll make cool. it happen. <clears throat> Shotgun fruiting chamber. Oh yeah, with all the holes in it and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's the old-fashioned method. That's that's been the method everyone grew mushrooms in in the '90s up until like the, the late, you know, 2010s. PF Tech was the the main method to go to. Oh yeah, that reminds I, um... me. I I have um. I did a, a solo live stream on my channel about the history of indoor magic mushroom cultivation. It's pretty interesting if anyone wants to go watch it. In my live stream playlist, I go from uh, Maria Sabina in Mexico in the 50s all the way up to through PF Tech and Professor Fanaticus getting raided from selling his spore kits in high times all the way up to Uncle Ben and that's where it ends and where we're at today. So I saw, yeah, uh, Ace Alex, hey. what what upcoming techs do you guys have coming? Um, I have the microwave tech is is just about polished up for the Patreon release. Um, I'm also uploading deleted videos from YouTube on my Patreon. And then after that microwave video is going to be Ziploc tech, which people have been waiting for. Then I've got no agar cloning. Um, and then I've got no PCLC, of course, coming on Patreon. So that's what I've got going on. For me, um, I'm working on. Yeah, so I'm uh, be doing PFK. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Work okay, what, what are you working on? Me? Uh, P I'm gonna do PF Tech for sure because I'm a rookie and obviously I just want to be able to grow mushrooms every which way there is to grow. Want to be able to be proficient in it, so definitely do that. BRF brown rice flour. Gonna try that out. Um, I just, you guys, if you guys watch my channel, you know I did the agar to grain. And the grain inside those jars are fully colonized now. So uh, what I'm just going to do is I was going to spawn to bulk into a six quart shoe box, like a little one. I've never done a six quart before. And um, try that out. And then you guys know I'm doing the hoodie tech right now with the all in one mushroom bag. We're doing the hoodie tech, trying that out. So. Oh yeah, you, I don't think you ever met him, Jesse Noller from Humble Fungus. His company kind of went under recently, but yeah, that's the guy who uploaded that. Um, 
And he's he had some pretty good techniques. He still posts every now and then, but yeah, hoodie tech is pretty good. Yeah, my first time doing. It. I, I like it so far. I mean, it's, I'm going to be giving you guys an update. I mean, there's pins forming right now on top of it, but it's just like just like you want it. You know what I mean? Where just the pins are forming right on the top of it, and those rubber bands are doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I'll be able to fruit inside the bag, which is what I want to do with my all-in-one bag. I never did that before. The first one had to take out and put in a model tub. Yeah, I just uploaded a video from the Full Send Organics. He sent me one of his Shitmaster 1000 bags. And what I did was I just poked needle holes all around the bag like a shotgun fruiting chamber. And that gave beautiful natalensis fruits. Very nice. Oh, I wanted a, I got a syringe for him. Full Send Organics. I, I like oh, yeah. to support YouTubers, so, you know. So I haven't used it yet, but I, I bought one and it's inside the refrigerator. Yeah. So what else we have going on in the chat? Um, oh no, PGT, what do you got going on? So the shop is gonna open doing? soon. Yeah, so the shop's opening up on Monday. I have a couple projects at hand I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on a morel video. So I got the- Oh, uh, we just mentioned that. The chance to go out and hunt some morels a couple weeks ago. So I got some footage from that and we're gonna kind of work on editing that and getting it out teaching people how to find morels that'll be a very interesting one very cool one to do uh, another thing i'm messing around with is the uh, all-in-one grow bags mushroom supplies sent me one to play around with so i'm gonna experiment with it and see how it goes and just kind of document how that works um what else am i got going on uh oh i'm doing uncle ben's tech so you guys kind of <laughs> kept poking at it for me to make an Uncle Ben's video, so I'm gonna do uh, my version of the Uncle Ben's. I'm gonna kind of do a little spin-off onto it and see uh, what I can produce out of these Uncle Ben's. Um, gonna be trying my shot at some uh, gourmet mushrooms in the Uncle Ben's tech and trying to, to get it to, to go. There's, I've Possible. seen some people with you know success with that. So Lion's I, Mane loves fruiting off that brown rice. Yep, so that's kind of what I have in the works. That right now, those bags are colonizing, and it shouldn't be too long uh, before they take off here. And it's just a matter of uh, getting them to fruit afterwards. I think the main thing people can look forward to my channel is he just doing more and more with those max shield bins, because I'm, I want to be like just full canopy every time. So just trying to improve all my techniques and everything so that I can constantly the more each harvest I'm getting more and more like as far as full canopy and I just want to be able to get to a point where I have I probably have like 15 max shield bins here that I can spawn the boat to and if I could have all those just full canopy then I feel like oh yeah now I'm doing something that's, that's the way to do it people, you know yeah it takes a lot of time and work to get to full canopy status a lot of cloning and repeating the process and getting your mycelium adapted to your fruiting environment. I'm learning. I'm definitely learning for sure. But it's going great. It's been a great eight months so far. You know, Just on the three days ago, I hit my eight month anniversary. So thanks to everybody that's been supporting me. The channel is about to hit 50,000 subscribers today. So thank you guys, man. It's so crazy. The channel blew up really way faster than I thought it would. So thank you guys. Yeah. You gotta love those analytics, man. We never know what's really going on. Yeah, though. You just mentioned the mushroom supplies a bag that they sent you. My um, my most popular video on my channel is my sport of flush with the mushroom supplies all in one bag. It's almost at 600,000 views and whatever it's been. Five months, whatever it is, four months. Yeah. People are really catching on and loving these all in one bags. For sure. Yeah, I really do simplify the process down and make it a lot easier for beginners to, to get into growing. The one that I'm using right now, the uh, the mushroom supplies bag, it worked fine. It just took a long time to colonize, but that could have been the strain, you know, as well. But the, uh, the one that I'm using right now from Mush Cult Supply is my first time using theirs. And it's, man, it's working great. So I'll definitely be trying the mush coat supply all in one bag they their bags were pretty good i think i've got some ads from them on instagram 
I get a lot of ads from people that, you know, selling my collagen products on Instagram. I'm always interested to see which one is really working and who's scamming. You never know. Like, I'm not talking bad about uh, anybody. I'm just saying, yeah. you never know. Let's see, before me, everybody knows I'm sponsored by North Sport now. But uh, before you know, I got sponsored by them, I'm, all my grain bags and everything came from Etsy. And I, those agar cups, the grain jars, Etsy. I've been getting really I haven't had one bad experience with anybody on Etsy. So, you know, shout out to everybody. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of gourmet cultures from Etsy one time where somebody was running a deal. And I, I don't think they realized how good the deal was, but I got like... Damn, I think it was like 15 syringes and I only paid like $10 and it was a bunch of different oysters, lion's mane. Well, I don't think they realized what they were doing. I tested them. They were all clean cultures too. Because after that, the price went up. I think they realized that. Oh, shit. Or you, you guys know that like the shop uh, app, just like, you know, it's connected to Shopify or whatever the case is. Oh, and yeah. The shop app, there's people selling psilocybin spores yeah. in the shop right now. I'm like, yeah, like, woo. The problem with that is the shops eventually they'll catch on and they'll shut those shops down but also the payment processors sometimes yeah. those will get caught first and get shut down so they don't really last too long you got to be like in the business for a while it's crazy i was going i'm like what in the world i got it recommended to me i'm like oh you guys selling i think it was like blue meaning <laughs> yeah i'm like oh man what is your still something what's going on Yeah, so I don't see much happening in the chat right now, but uh, for a third episode of the game show, I think it went pretty well. I think we all had some fun. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate you guys. Whatever I can do, if you guys want me to do something, just holler at me. If I can do it, I'll do it. I appreciate it. We appreciate oh, here we go. Happen. Smoking Joe. Smoking Joe asked, what's a good mushroom to grow for a novice? Uh, well, it depends on what you you want to grow, magic or gourmet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just assume people are talking about not gourmet. Right, and this, yeah, with our little circle, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, magic. I you know, a lot of people that, go. You know what? Some people, a lot of people ask me about the strains, and I never talk about strains on my channel because you know I'm always fighting with YouTube because they try to put me in the drug category or whatever. I'm like, you can't do that. I'm growing right. mushrooms. That's yeah. It every so time mission the strains always do that on discord and now if you follow me on twitter they have to tell the strains but this is not my channel so i'll tell you the strains because <laughs> you guys don't care so for anybody that's been wondering about the strains that i've that i've been growing if you go back and you look at that all-in-one mushroom bag the one with the most the mushroom supplies all-in-one bag that was uh pink buffalo then the ones that you saw in the 12 quart shoe boxes, the first ones, the, those big cat ones, those were blue, blue, uh, blue meanies. And then I've also grown um, purple mystic. Those with that flush where you see the purple spores on top of the mushrooms and everything, those are purple mystic mushrooms. And of course you guys seen the apes. I mean, anybody just looking at those, of course knew that those were apes already. And, um, Right now, what I got going is Jedi Mindfuck. I got uh, Ma Blue Magnolia, Ill Billy. Oh, Maza Topic is one of the ones that you saw me grow on the channel as well. And uh, Haoli. And that came from PGT. Shout out to PGT there. Well, thank you. Well, oh, and I just started. I, oh, I did the Enigma. Enigmas. I did those. Those are colonizers right now. And uh, golden teachers, I'm growing, I'm doing golden teachers for the first time. I just inoculated those last week, so I'm excited to do. Those are always a classic. Golden yeah. teachers. Uh, Blood Rage 13 are. said, I have small black dots starting to grow in my BRF jars with my penis envy mycelium. Is that normal? No, small black dots are not normal. I mean, it's hard to tell without photos, but if it's not white, like Brookie said, it's not right. Oh man! Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Anytime anyone asks me for recommendations on which strain a beginner should you know, work on, I always just say Golden Teachers or the B plus B positive. Um, the reason why? 
the reason why is those those varieties have been extremely popular and because of their popularity they've been cultivated out numerous times so they've gone through multiple and multiple generations of being domesticated so they they are more easily adaptable to any fruiting environment that you put them through making them the easiest ones to start off growing because you, you can never go wrong with them they'll fruit in almost any kind of fruiting conditions you give them once you start branching off into exotic rare you know varieties and strains uh they get a bit more difficult especially if you're trying to like take like a wild print from outside and then you try and grow that inside they're gonna have difficulties adjusting to your fruiting conditions so um i don't recommend those until you get a bit more experience and then you can start messing with them i mean any cube will grow the same way the only difference is whether or not they're adjusted to the fruiting environment that you have them in and if they're not if they're not adjusted to the fruiting environment, you're going to get aborts pop up in there. Um, that's that's one of the, the issues with genetics coming out. Is they're not they don't like the fruiting environment or struggling with it, so they'll abort. But if you have patience, something that I've noticed with uh, a lot of tubs of mine that have aborted, if you give them enough time, they will start to push out a second flush on top of the first abort flush. And sometimes the second flush might abort as well, but then they're going to push out a third flush. And typically you're gonna get like one or two fruits that end up actually making it to maturity and what's happening there is the mycelium is adapting to your fruiting environment and eventually they crack the code in order to fruit in your environment that you're providing them and they will provide mature fruits that will oftentimes they kind of look funny they're, uh, they're sometimes mutated or they're just gonna grow and like open up their caps right away because they're gonna try and sporulate and drop spores to try and repeat their life cycle to move on so such something i've noticed you know through my years of, of mycology work so that's just a little tip for you guys i don't know about novice but my favorite so far that i've grown is blue meanings what's been my favorite so far now, I'd like to know, so people, there's this, isn't there a strain of Penelia cyanescence called Blue Meanies as well? Yes. So, oh. so yeah, Blue Meanies yeah. originally are Penelia cyanescence. Um, somewhere along the way, um, someone decided to, you know, name a, a Cubensis Blue Meanie. I think they were just trying to use that name because the Blue Meanie name is a popular name. Uh, but Blue Meanie originally refers to Penelia cyanescence. If you often find them in the wild you know they brew is extremely blue and it's kind of and they're, they're really strong they're uh Penelia cyanescens are known to be like two to four times more potent than your average cubensis and that's why they were called blue meanies because they they hit very hard and yeah somewhere along the line someone decided to call a cube blue meanies and that's kind of where the birth of the blue meanie cube came up and uh oh. they're, they're not really the true blue meanies Well, David Morris asked, what is a fair price, y'all think, for our kind of liquid master cultures, four half-gallon mason jars? I don't know, four half-gallons of magic liquid culture? Jeez, please. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. What are you trying to do with all that? Let's see, if, if, <laughs> if the 10, the 10cc <laughs> syringe is... Might as well just put them into a super soaker and just go outside and spray it everywhere. Just <laughs> spray them. <laughs> better inoculate everything. Inoculate the world. <laughs> oh shit, shout out ITW Drew. <laughs> Went from inoculating the West to inoculating the world. Hey. Right, what else we got here? Uh, I did Chris, uh, Cambodians and Amazonians as well. But, uh, yeah, Chris. Had, Chris had, asked, what yet. kind of difficulty level you put Cambodian at? I haven't spawned to both yet, so I'm not sure on that one. 420 yeah, Micro said, "Evening, dudes. I built a gadget that can cool and solidify agar plates, and remove the condensation in less than a minute after pouring." Do you guys think anyone would be interested? Um, I stacked the, I stacked the agar cups like PGT did on his videos. The condensation. 
Yeah, I find stacking them helps the heat rise and it helps remove condensation on the lower plates. The top one always ends up with condensation though, that, that one doesn't, unless you put like a hot cup of water over it to kind of help. Um, another thing is if you have a flow hood, what you can do is leave your stack of plates in front of the flow hood and let the flow hood run for uh, 24 to 48 hours and the clean air blowing at the plates will also help remove condensation. I use it in one of your videos, and that's why I stack mine up. So that's it works. It definitely works. That's why I use yeah. this cup. I, try, I bought the uh, petri dishes. I was like, you know what? These cups are a lot easier, and I don't do paraffin and everything. I've been using those cups. I think the first person to do that was Home Mycology. I don't know. That was the first place anyone ever really saw it. Yeah, I, I, I was probably a test of that. I've I, I've seen him use it too, and that's kind of what got me into using them as well. Yeah. No, a half gallon jar is different strains. Still, that's a lot of liquid culture. Yeah, I was about to say that's still a lot, isn't it? Half gallon? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Justin Nor said, I just lost ITW isolated syringe hillbilly in Uncle Ben bags because they colonized so fast and overheated. But the three pound grain bag is going strong, so I'll live on. Very aggressive. I don't know how your your Uncle Ben bag would have overheated. And what did it do? Stall out? Did you squirt too much? You yeah. know, keep the solution. Don't squirt two cc's in there. Uh, that's did, too wet. I did a point five or point four, I think it was. And right. then Ryan Caraway. Ryan Caraway said, have you guys ever added more cocoa after mushrooms start penning? I've done it after I've harvested. I've added fresh substrate. I don't even do, I don't even use cocoa anymore. I had you guys know I had that. I kept getting the contam over and over again. I basically do a pseudo casing now with the substrate. It's the grain with the substrate. Mix that together and then put more of the same substrate on top and do like a pseudo casing. I don't yeah, actually cover use the cocoa grain. anymore. Right. That's been working for me, but you know. Everybody has a different way to do it. Uh, yeah, Ace Alex said, you try to do point four, but when the plunger gets stuck, you end up doing point eight. Yeah, the trick with that is don't... Sometimes when you inoculate these 90-second rice bags, the needle can get stuck in a grain of rice. So if you feel that, you can still squirt it. I mean, it's, it's kind of like its own little trick to where... What I do now is I puncture the bag and kind of pull away from the rice to stop that from happening. But you can still squirt. Just you got to be very firm yet gentle. Oh, another tip for anybody that was asking: uh, once your mushroom starts pinning, you don't want to be doing stuff to it while it's pinning. Um, especially with a lot of uh, exotic varieties, they're very sensitive at the pinning stage. So if you miss on pins, there's a high chance that they're going to end up aborting. So. If you're going to miss your stuff, miss before it starts pinning. And then once you see pins, leave it alone. Oh, to answer your question, uh, somebody asked me, what did I use for a substrate? I'm using the North Sports substrate every time now. You guys know that I did the Max Shield bins uh, with the North Spore substrate. And then the own CVG that I made myself, I did uh, PGT's recipe that he has on his channel, how to make the bulk substrate. I did that and I used the North Spore and I got a better result. Like strong, it was like the mushrooms were like more like robust and stronger, bigger, everything from the North Spore. So I, and I, I get those for free. So that's another reason why I use them too. But no, they're great. Shout out to North Spore. That's what I've been using the North Spore substrate every time. Nice. It's good to hear they work for you. Most of my grows has just been yeah, shout out to North Spore. the same bucket tech that I've you know, have on my channel, just core, core vermiculite and gypsum. Um, it, it just kind of yep. depends on the genetics, kind of, in terms of how well flushes do, but everything will grow on them practically. I've never really sure. had. I definitely used it on the channel to mess with manure stuff. So, uh, definitely, definitely work. Great information. And then, you know, what's so great about the recipe is it just like you were saying in that video, it's like. Damn near right on when it comes to the fill capacity. 
in that recipe. You don't have to do much to it. You I guys know what we're talking about. Well, fill, fill capacity we're talking about is how much moisture is inside your substrate. Whenever you pick it up and squeeze it, it shouldn't be just pouring out with water. You only right. should see really a couple of drops. And that's how you know that your substrate has the right moisture in it. That's what fill capacity is for all the rookies like me. My bad, go ahead. Another thing is um, that, that recipe, it, it really depends on the brand of Cocoa Core bricks that you're using. So what I've noticed over time is I've, I've experimented with different bricks. Um, I, I mainly use Cocoa Bliss bricks, but I've also had to, uh, tried out the uh, Eco Earth from Zoomed. And those bricks are a bit lighter than the Cocoa Bliss. So if you use the same amount of water for them, you're going to end up being over fuel capacity and over saturated. So it really depends on the brand of core. If you find you're following my recipe and your substrate ends up being way too wet, what I would do is dial back the amount of water usage onto it instead of four and a half quarts of water. Do three or three and a half quarts of water with it instead because it's much easier to add more water to it if it's under fuel capacity than it is to squeeze water out to get it to fuel capacity for spawning. It just becomes messier if it ends up being too saturated. So if you find your substrate saturated, add less water and then add more water to it after it's done and mixed if you need to. I still just use the I thought about that. That's why I didn't want to say one that you got. Cocoa Bliss or whatever. I just got the same thing that you got and just did the same way you did. I just did um I did that live harvest on Instagram at the Golden Teachers that was just in 100% loose eco earth cocoa coir no nothing else just 100% cocoa coir like if you're if you're sticking with just like one or two uncle ben bags I would continue buying the loose cocoa coir from the pet store because you're not going to need to hydrate a whole brick for like one bag of 90 second rice and that loose coir really helps Um, Ace Alex said, thank you guys for this platinum content and help. After show helpline is the best thing to ever happen. You guys got me so passionate about shrooms. I love it. Spreading the passion to others as well. Yo, yo. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate it. About to get to work. I got to go Yeah, I think it was a good show. Right now, makes you busy. I think it was a great show, episode number three. Any other um, any other things going on? Anyone else have any questions or comments? Any more plugs? I'm good. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Like I said, anything that you need me to do, if I'm physically able to do it, I will do it for you guys. I appreciate y'all. So Rookie's there for us. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming rookie. on. It was fun. We knew right away Rookie had to be the first the first official contestant. Hey. Numero uno. That's right. All right, so yeah, uh, last minute things. Don't forget to like this video. All right, and um, if you the, you can still donate to the tip link even after the show ends. Because um, that's going to go for a few days. The Discord channel, uh, the Discord server is in the description of this video to join for the Michael Game Show to become a contestant in the future, which is what we're still working on. Um, yeah. My Patreon is going to be launched very soon. PGT Shop is opening soon again for new cards. And I think that's about it right now. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate y'all. Yes, likewise, thank you guys for watching, tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. All right, bye, everybody.